and welcome back to Bookish Theories. In today's video, we'd like to talk about Le Seraphim's Unforgiven album trailer, focusing on a little breakdown of the video to see what clues it can give us about the concept of this upcoming comeback. Now, after the announcement of Le Seraphim's first full album, Unforgiven, the project was introduced with a mystical trailer titled Burn the Bridge. Like The World is My Oyster and The Hydra, this intro is characterized by symbolic imagery, insane aesthetics, and a multilanguage narration introducing us to the main theme of the album as a whole. After presenting themselves as fearless and anti-fragile, this time around Le Seraphim are coming back as the unforgiven, that is, people who actively reject the opinion of others and decide to move forward by being unapologetically themselves. According to the press release, Unforgiven will explore Le Seraphim's intention to pave their own path regardless of people's judgement. It's about them confronting the limits they were imposed, facing the line that they were told not to cross, and eventually making the conscious decision of breaking these rules without asking for anybody's permission or forgiveness. As we see in a second, Le Seraphim are unforgiven because they are proudly embracing their role. While they are rebelling against a system that wants to limit them, they no longer look at this system for validation, so it's not important whether these people forgive them because the girls no longer value their opinion. The moment Le Seraphim take control of their path, they don't need to be forgiven by others because these people no longer have the authority to decide if what they are doing is right or wrong. This is a concept that in many respects can be applied to both fiction and reality. In the teaser, for instance, the unforgiving concept was first introduced with the phrase alone we meander, together we adventure. That is the same sentence that was used to present Crimson Heart, thus implying that this album will probably include connections to their storyline. Now, if we keep in mind the premise of Crimson Heart, this makes a lot of sense, because the themes of the story very much fit the general concept of unforgiven. At its most fundamental level, Crimson Heart tells the story of a group of girls who live the controlled system of refugia and go find their own path into the unknown. In both Crimson Heart and Unforgiven, the premise is that the girls challenge the limits that they are given, thus venturing outside their comfort zone to reach goals nobody has ever reached. As I mentioned before, this is a concept that is also relevant in the real life experience, because like the characters in the story, Le Seraphim want to challenge the boundaries of the industry and move forward together following a unique path. In the trailer, this idea is especially highlighted by the narration, because this time around it has been inspired by the thoughts and goals of the members themselves. As the narration explains, at the beginning of their journey, the darkness drove them into a corner and forced them to choose between giving up or giving in. This might have been a journey that allowed them to move forward, but only within the limits that others decided for them. As we already established, however, this is not enough for Le Seraphim, so their answer is that they reject the choices that they were given and wish for what is forbidden to them instead. They see a closed door, a door locked shut, a door slightly ajar, and they open them all because the path that they are meant to follow together is back there. Now this part is especially interesting here, because the door metaphor is a reference to Yunjin's special thanks from Fearless. Back then she explained that in her journey to get to the view she encountered many doors. Some of them were open, some were closed, some were ajar, but for a long time she felt like nobody was on the other side answering her knocking. After joining the lineup, however, she finally felt like she was heading in the direction she needed to go all along, so it was Le Seraphim who finally opened that door, and it was them who helped her achieve her dream. Le Seraphim answered their call, so in the narration, their story continues with them venturing beyond the threshold and towards an adventure that they'll never come back from. This is why the trailer is called Burn the Bridge. Burning the bridge means doing something that makes it impossible to undo what has been done before, so the moment Le Seraphim choose to pave their own way and cross that line, there is no going back. In the narration, however, it's implied that if they really want that kind of freedom, this is a step that they have to take. This is because by burning the bridge, they can use that light to brighten the new path ahead, so only by making the initial sacrifice, they can find the light they need. Now, in the trailer, this concept is expressed with very symbolic scenes that are meant to show Le Seraphim taking that risk and finding that light. Right from the beginning, we get the sense that this light is already inside of them. Katsua's heart is beating gold, Sakura's eyes shaped like a heart, but the girls are injured and crying as they wander in the dark. To free themselves from these controlling shadows, they have to confront themselves and come together, because by doing so, they can be strong enough to burn the bridge and channel that light. In many respects, this is a process that kind of rejects the old in order to welcome the new. In the desert, for instance, we see Chewon with a bionic karma offering a heart to a dying tree. Whether 
at first looks like a sacrifice however, by the end it turns into her rejecting this process and walking away from it altogether. As Kazuha's wings go up in flames, Unche stands in the middle of a burning kitchen and Yunjin overviews a book burning under the moonlight, that fire represents them burning the bridge connecting them to the past. According to the press release, the focus on the burning here is meant to symbolize old rules and prejudices going up in flames as the girls reject these dogmas. Their wings burn because, as they told us in the past, they are not celestials, so they are not the idealized angels that people want them to be. They reject the sweetness being offered on the table, choosing a wilder side that they can write together, and the flower rooted in the book eventually burns because they are rejecting the prospect of finding success by following the rules. By burning all those bridges, let Seraphim free the light that they have inside of their heart, so from the ashes of the old, a new heart brightens the darkness of their new path. By the end, we see Sakura and the others coming together and diving into the beautiful sea. Now they're no longer crying, they're laughing, because after opening all those doors, they're finally stepping into the unknown towards a new adventure. If the fire symbolizes them getting rid of the outdated standards and rules, the water is them welcoming the new path full of possibilities. To see where this path will lead them, we'll have to wait and see, but in the meantime, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, please think about liking and subscribing. As always, thank you so much for watching guys, I'll see you next time, bye bye!